Hello, Maestro. It's so great to be speaking with you again. Well, it's nice to see you and to talk to you. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, for our audience, would you mind just briefly um, letting us know who you are and uh, a little about your career? Sure. Well, my name is Gerard Schwartz and, um, gee, my career. Well, I've been, uh, I was a first trumpet of the New York Philharmonic for a while, where I played with Bernstein a lot. Uh, then I was music director in Seattle, where I, I, I was there for almost 30 years, and I'm the conductor laureate. I was music director of the New York Chamber Symphony, and I was there 25 years. And music director of Mosey Mozart, I was there 20 years, and music, uh, and I'm the uh, I have an, I have a title there too, conductor emeritus, I think. And then uh, I was also in the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic, and I conducted for a lot of opera in Washington and Russia. And I'm not supposed to say that anymore. And uh, San Francisco and, uh, and and Seattle. Anyway, uh, now I'm actually you're speaking to me from Greensboro, North Carolina, where I've been running this uh, incredible music festival called the Eastern Music Festival, which is a combination of a festival, you know, concerts every night. And 280 students with two student orchestras playing a concert a week. It's a five-week festival, which is ending this week. And just in time for me to go to Vancouver and in and, and God's country. I mean, Greensboro is beautiful, but it's not God's country. And uh, I'm excited to be I'm excited to be back. Well, we cannot oh, I wait. Say, I also teach at the University of Miami. I forgot to say that, the Frost School of Music. I'm the distinguished professor of conducting. That's an important one. Uh, yeah, and that's all quite a mouthful, to be sure. <laughs> I, I forgot we, orchestral studies. <laughs> well, we can't wait uh, to welcome you back to Vancouver, back to Washington. Uh, and besides that, you mentioned that you're working on a music festival right now. So I know that you've got quite a bit of experience at different music festivals. I do. I my my first one was uh, in Aspen, where I was on the faculty there uh, from the time I was nineteen for seven years. Then I started my own festival in New Jersey called the Waterloo Festival, which I did for ten, which is a wonderful based an Aspen model, but in New Jersey rather than in the mountains. Uh, and of course, mostly Mozart. Uh, but most of Mozart's different. That was just that's just that was just concerts only can set or five six days a week, six concerts a week. Uh, this festival is, uh, I would say, it's really student-oriented, even though we have a faculty orchestra, but it's made up of 56 faculty members and students and fellows, and and it's just a, a wonderful place. Uh, so uh, uh, summertime is a great time for music, as is the wintertime, but in a way, um, people... I mean, here at Eastern, where we have a concert every night, you, people are out every night. They, many, many people come to every concert. And I asked somebody the other day, why do you come to every concert? Because I love music, and it's better than staying home and watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> to be sure. Right. Well, we were just so grateful to have you uh, as a part of last year's inaugural festival. Uh, how would you say your experience was of last year's time? Well, it was wonderful in, in a word, but Vancouver is gorgeous. I, I, you know, we love the Pacific Northwest. My wife, Jody, and I, we spent so many extraordinary years in Seattle. All our kids grew up there. Two of our kids were born there. Um, uh, and I mean, everything about the Pacific Northwest uh, we love. And we love Washington State. You know, it's just such a special place. You know, there have been some changes since we left, unfortunately, but not in Vancouver. Vancouver seems to be uh, a bright star uh, in the horizon uh, for for Washington. Um, the festival last year, I mean, I was, you know, you just don't know. It turns out that the venue is sensational. That tent in the middle of town, and we got so many people being part of of uh, cultural life in Vancouver. But it's not only classical music, it's all kinds of music and arts and artisans. And it's it's a celebration of the city. And the city is so beautiful. The waterfront is so gorgeous. So many extraordinary restaurants and wonderful people. I mean, it's really, uh, it, it, it's it's a very special place. And if you can, if you can bring together uh, the city, I assume the state's involved too, but certainly the city, and uh, involved the, the wonderful Vancouver uh, Orchestra. And and then, you know, you have, it's just what could be more wonderful to spend a week that way. 
<laughs> Certainly. And we are just so blessed to have such a wonderful community for the arts in Vancouver. It's just not at all possible to do something like this without that kind of a community. Absolutely, you're correct, and 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 it shows. It shows in the in the people that support the orchestra, but it also shows in in the general population because of the people that attended last year, and I'm sure will attend again this year because mm -hmm. it was a wonderful experience for us all. It was. Well, this year, we have some really exciting stuff to look forward to with you. You are again joining us for two concerts on Saturday, August 3rd and Sunday, August 4th. Uh, the third, you're going to be uh, conducting a Beethoven concert, which is going to be a great treat for everyone, including our featured pianist, Olga Kern. Yeah, you know, it's the two pieces we're playing, they're the two fifths, you know, the fifth piano, mm -hmm. the fifth symphony. they are true masterpieces, but they're also appreciated as two of the most important works ever written, ever, for anything. Uh, you know, if you pa 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 pa, you hear that, pa 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 pa. I mean, it's everything for all of us, whether it's the victory sign and, and D-Day and whatever. I mean, it was just, it's it's one of the great masterpieces and it's as popular as it is because it's great. The Fifth Piano Concerto, similarly, Beethoven premiered it himself. He wrote it for himself, and he wrote five concertos, all of them wonderful. The Fifth is the great masterpiece of the, uh, the concertos. And Olga is, I mean, a remarkable artist. She is just a among the most wonderful pianists I've worked with, and I'm so thrilled that she's coming to join us. So the two, the two Fifths, Piano Concerto and Symphony, uh, you know, what's interesting about a piece like the Beethoven Fifth Symphony, it's very famous, but it's surprising how many people have never heard it live. And right. so my guess is when, when people come to the park to hear this, or many of them, maybe three quarters of them, they've never heard it live before. What an experience. Mm -hmm. It's definitely one that you got to do at least once, <laughs> if, not, sure. if not as many times as possible. That's right. <laughs> And then on Sunday is going to be a real blast because we've got the tribute to Bernstein, who you mentioned um, you did actually know and have a relationship with. Yes, well, I knew him quite well, and my, Jody knew him even better because Jody's parents were close friends uh, of his because her father, my father-in-law, no longer with us, but he was uh, uh, the principal viola, and he played the Walton Concerto with Bernstein, both at the National Symphony and with the New York Philharmonic. And um, for me, growing up, listening to, because uh, I grew up in New York, growing up listening to the New York Philharmonic with Bernstein, then all of a sudden, having him as my conductor, you know, going to uh, tra travel to Europe with him, we traveled to Asia with him, you really get to know the person, then spend time with him afterwards. And Igor, our executive director, who is you know second to none, had the idea of doing a Bernstein tribute. Well, obviously, you're going to do West Side Story, Candide, On the Town. That's what we're doing. But we're also doing the first movement of the Mahler Second Symphony. Bernstein was more responsible for resurrecting that great composer's music to the world than any other single person. When he took over, as music director of the New York Philharmonic in 1959, that was one year shy of the 100th anniversary of Mahler's birth. Mahler was born in 1860. And Mahler was the music director of the New York Philharmonic in 1909 and 10. Maybe it was 1909, 10, 11. I can't remember exactly, but right in that, just before he died. And there was a manager of the orchestra then, a guy named Carlos Mosley who uh, we were very fond of. And Carlos went to Bernstein and said, you know, Mahler was music director here. His symphonies are quite wonderful. Why don't you think about doing all nine of them uh, uh, and see what happens? And that was the beginning of the resurrection of Mahler as a great composer. Now everybody plays Mahler all the time. And Bernstein, I think, recorded all the symphonies twice, one in v once in Vienna, once in New York. He was associated with, with Mahler more than any other composer. Now, the first, second movement, uh, the first movement of the second symphony is a standalone piece. In other words, you do a symphony, usually you, you play three or four movements, whatever it is. And he originally wrote this as a, 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 a Dance Totenfire, the fire of death, dance of death. And mm -hmm. um, 
he premiered it as a single work. So it gives us an opportunity to, to do a 20 minute masterpiece by Mahler and then the rest of the program be Bernstein. I'm including, you know, including uh, Maria singing and uh, from West Side Story. I mean, it's, it's going to be a dynamite program, I think. I think so too. And the wonderful thing about Bernstein is his music is so beautiful and, and so majestic and yet really very accessible too. Uh, and I think that's the beauty of it is that it's, it's very friendly music that, that can be a great place for people to come in. Absolutely. And that's really important because, you know, when we think of contemporary music, so often we, we think of music that audiences don't like. If you write music audiences don't like, it's a bad idea. The audience <laughs> matters. And the music that audiences don't like don't that doesn't live on. Bernstein understood that. He had conflicts about it because the style of, of writing when he was writing, not, not, not shows like On the Town or Candy or West Side Story, but his symphonies, and the style, he was nervous because he was writing tonal, beautiful music. And everybody was writing very angular, discordant music that was hard to understand. It's hard to be different than everyone else. But now, I mean, he's dead now. And when you look back on what he wrote, boy, it's wonderful. And a lot of the music that was written during his lifetime, which was, let's say, less accessible, has died away. It's never played. Mm -hmm. So he he fought the good battle. And, uh, and his three symphonies are sensational, uh, besides his music for Broadway. Absolutely. Well, I think both concerts are going to be just wonderful, and I cannot wait for us to share this great music with our community. Do you have any last words for the audience uh, before they come and join us in a couple of weeks? Well, you know, obviously, as, as, as I pointed out, they matter a lot to me. I mean, the thing that matters to me in my life the most uh, uh, on a professional way is the actual music that the composer wrote. Number two is the audience. So I hope... Everybody who's listening to this and hears this comes uh, comes downtown to hear Saturday, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon to hear some extraordinary music. Bring your kids, bring your dogs, and have a good time. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Maestro, and I look forward to seeing you in August. I look forward to seeing you as well. All the best. Thanks for doing this. Take care. Bye-bye.